Chapter 14. Drum roll, please. All right. Wah! My eyes snap open with a gasp. My arms and legs are wound tightly around Doug, spooning him from behind like a giant body pillow. I love it. What time is it? We were supposed to leave before the sun rose. We stayed up too late and overslept. Doug, wake up! I manage to untangle myself from him and scramble upright. I give him a little shake. Five more minutes. D just a second! The others are going to be so mad at me. Answering the door with Doug in my bed isn't going to look good either. I suck in a deep breath and go to open the door, dreading my peers' reaction. Yeah, I'm like, it's probably, uh, Wiley. I wasn't expecting it to be any of the band. If you did oversleep, they probably left your butt behind. All of the air vanishes from my lungs. I freeze, feeling as though ice water has crept into my veins. Good morning, Cadence. G good morning, sir. Can I help you? Let's cut straight to the chase. I've asked this question a great deal of times this week, but I expect this is the last time I'll have to ask it. Where are the pit instruments? Huh? I, I don't know. Doug appears by my side. Doug, can you answer my question? Mm. I don't know either. No? Then let me try asking. One more time. Oh, shit. Holy crap. He pulled a gun. What? Oh, God. How long have you had that? Um. Um. <clears throat> um. Things definitely took a turn. Where are the pit instruments? Is that a gun? Doug moves to stand in front of me, tucking me behind him with one arm. I barely register it through my shock. Doug is so brave, good God. Mr. Wiley has a gun, and he's pointing it at us. Don't lie to me. I know you know. There's no use in pretending anymore. Now you're going to take me to them, or else... Use your imagination. Strangely enough, the shock fades and is replaced by a strange calm. I will not let myself panic. I have to believe that everything will be okay. If we give him the pit instruments, no one will get hurt. Only... Everyone is escaping across the lake at this moment. If Mr. Wiley sees them, who knows what he'll do. I can't take him to the pit instruments. Not yet. Stop stalling and get walking! O okay, let's go to the woods. The woods? I knew it. Doug grabs my hand tightly in his. It's gonna be okay. Sky is red. The sky is the color of blood. The sun will be rising soon. I hope I'll be here to see it. We come to the spot where Doug and I met up yesterday, where he tried to give me the wind chime. Yeah, I'm like, that's still there. The wind chime. I made him drop it and we never picked it back up. I know. You know, I was wondering. I just read, this is where she saw you. I was like, did Susie betray us? Because she was the only one that had a problem this time. I mean, it might not be Susie, but Susie's the most sus right now. In which case, like, I have so many questions. <laughs> Susie, why? Why would you be like this? That hurts more than Clark. I knew it'd be here. This is where she saw you. Where are they? Where who saw us? Lie to me! You buried them, didn't you? I know you did! You're insane! Mr. Wiley, how could the two of us bury the entire pit section? No, it was you! Start digging! He points with his guns, his gun to two shovels sticking out of the ground. I hadn't noticed them there. What the... 
The instruments are... Doug, we need to dig. He looks at me in confusion. I stare back, silently willing him to understand we need to buy time. We can't go to the lake right now. Besides, if Mr. Wiley is so convinced the pit instruments are underground, then we should go with it. Let him see for himself that he's wrong. Understanding seems to dawn on Doug, and he takes the other shovel. Okay. Let's do it. Mr. Wiley, please put the gun away. There's no need for it. Oh, but there is. You never know what sort of dangers are lurking in the middle of the woods. Don't worry, kids. I'll look after you. My heart is pounding furiously. I want to scream, but if I start, I'm afraid I'll never stop. So I try to pretend there isn't a gun pointed at me and pick up a shovel. Start digging. That's not ominous at all. In the distance, I hear thunder. A raindrop plinks off my nose. Mr. Wiley does nothing to acknowledge the impending storm, positioning himself under the canopy of the trees. I, um... It's not a good idea to stand under trees when there's lightning involved, but you do you. And so Doug and I begin, begin to dig. And dig. And dig. Whoa. It be raining. There is nothing but the sound of the shovels slicing through dirt and our own labored breathing. The rain begins to fall steadier, soaking our clothes and softening the ground into mud. Our knee-deep hole begins to fill with rainwater. I'm getting tired. Hang in there, Cadence. We got this. I'm not going to let him hurt you. Why did you do it? The sound of Mr. Wiley's voice fills me with dread. He's looking at me, eyes colder than ice. Tell me the truth. <laughs> it's my fault. Doug! It's true, Cadence. I didn't stop to think about what I was doing. This is all my fault. So punish me, Mr. Wiley. Let Cadence go. I take full responsibility. My voice comes out shrill and panicked at the thought of Doug sacrificing himself for me. I won't let you take all the blame! Mr. Wiley, Doug and I are both responsible for breaking the pit instruments and hiding them from you. We're so sorry. We should have told you right away. Yeah. The pit instruments are... broken. I I'm so sorry! I struggle to choke back tears. I could bury you here, and no one would ever know. Please! I can't stop the tears from coming now. Terror petrifies me. Tell the others you went home sick. Just like Garth. Just like Garth? G garth What happened to Garth? Keep digging! <sighs> this guy, is, he's just so far gone, man. I struggle to dig, but it's getting difficult. It's raining so hard now. Not a humid summer rain, but a premature icy fall rain. My wet clothes cling to my skin and I feel frozen to my core. I can't see. I can barely breathe. My lungs feel like they're shrinking in my chest. I think I'm having a panic attack. That's enough. Caden, stop! Doug throws down his shovel. His arms wrap around me, holding me close. I can't stop shaking and sobbing. His hands stroke my face and back, desperate to comfort me. Don't stop! Keep going! <laughs> no! We're done! You're done when I say you are! Oh boy. Without warning, Mr. Wiley flies towards us. He grabs Doug's arm and hauls him out of the pit we've dug, tearing him away from me. No! Leave him alone! I barely recognize my own shrieking voice, so full of fear. I wail wordlessly, sobbing, screaming, begging for him to stop. Oh, man, this is... I, I'd say this is more intense than Peter's root for sure. Mr. Wiley forces Doug to his knees and aims the gun at his head. Please! Mr. Wiley, please don't do this! 
so look. You've got three seconds to change my mind from what I'm about to do. One. Doug! Close your eyes. Two. No! Please, God, no! Don't hurt him! Three. The instruments are in the lake! We put them in the lake! They're not here! The hand holding the gun drops. They're not here. And neither is the band. No! Oh. <laughs> you could have let him uh, not know that, but okay, it's fine. Doug! I'm sure they've escaped by now. There's no use hiding it anymore. There's no use hiding anything anymore. What do you mean? The band escaped. Go see for yourself. Mr. Wiley goggles at each of us in turn. Then he turns and stumbles away in the direction of the lodge. And now you guys run your asses off to the lake. As soon as he's gone, I clamber out of the hole, nearly slipping on the mud. Cadence! Doug! I throw myself into his arms, sobbing. He squeezes me to his chest so tight I can barely breathe. I was so scared. I was so scared. I've got you. I thought I was going to lose you. I pull back to look into his eyes. He gazes down at me, waterlogged, and I can see all of my fear and relief reflected in his face. Without thinking, we push our lips together. <laughs> this is the first kiss. The desperation of the first kiss. Oh, gosh. Uh, okay, but you guys gotta get out of here. <laughs> like, soon. Vaguely, I registered this as our first kiss, but it seems silly to think of. No first kiss should ever be like this. It should be at the end of a cute date or a fun night out. Not next to a muddy ditch in the rain where your band director just threatened to kill you. I almost laugh out loud at the absurdity of it all. Oh, got a wider shot. I can't believe it took me a life-threatening situation to help me realize that I don't ever want to lose Doug. He's so selfless and caring. He treats everyone with kindness. He always puts his family and friends before himself, no matter the situation. We may have only been together a week, but it feels like we've known each other for much longer. And though at first I wasn't so sure about him, I know now that I don't want to be apart from him. I care about Doug. I'm nuts about Doug. I can't believe you were actually calling back to that line from last night. <laughs> Trauma does weird things to a person, but <laughs> it could happen. I am Doug Nuts. You're something. And, uh, and she just starts maniacally laughing. All right, Doug, you gotta, like, take care of this girl. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I think something's wrong with us. Neither of us can stop laughing or sobbing until Mr. Wiley comes back. I, I can't believe you guys stood there the entire time and waited for him to come back. What is wrong with you? I would have ran my ass off. Oh, sheesh. I can't. I, I can't. I just, I don't understand the decisions in this route. <laughs> it's not me. It ain't me. I can't, I can't compute. <clears throat> anyway, hooray, the band got away, including the traitor Susie. They're all gone. The band. So they've escaped. Good. There's a part of me that acknowledges I am facing down death right now. Before me is a crazed man with a life-threatening weapon in his hand. But for some reason, I've got a stupid smile plastered onto my rain-soaked face. Maybe I've gone crazy. Practice should have started ten minutes ago. Ah, oh, hell. You can hold band with just two kids, right? Two is better than none. He's right. Two is better than none. <laughs> ha! Oh, wait, I see it now. We've all gone crazy. Let's get to practicing! 
I can tell it's going to be a great day for band. And that's how Doug and I became the best two-man marching band in the land? Wait, no, this isn't right. Don't fade to black yet! I'm like, did I get a bad ending? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Memories, the final chapter. What the frick is happening? Uh, it's still Sunday. What? I, I feel like I've gone crazy. Doug, wake up! I am awake. Uh... Though now that you say that, I'm beginning to doubt myself. The both of us blink back to reality. Currently, we're on the band field. The rain has stopped and the sky is clearing up. I'm on my podium and Doug is the only one here, along with his bass drum. Mr. Wiley sits hunched in the far corner of the field, surrounded by wet, broken pit instruments. His eyes are glassy and staring as he mechanically attempts to fix them piece by piece. Why even bother if there's no one left to play them? That's not something I'm going to voice aloud. Hey! What? I hadn't noticed Mr. Wiley jump to his feet and approach us. I'm terrified of him, but luckily his gun doesn't seem to be anywhere in sight. I don't know what he did with it. You kids are doing a great job! Why don't you take a five minute break? Then we'll start afternoon rehearsal! He meanders back to the pit instruments and sits down in the grass. But instead of resuming his work, he just stares into the distance. I climb down from my podium and Doug puts down his bass drum. We approach Mr. Wiley tentatively, Doug never leaving my side. He looks tense and ready to spring to my defense at any moment. Mr. Wiley, please let us leave. Mr. Wiley's eyes are glassy, though he shakes his head once. Can't do that. Let us go, and we'll... We'll bring back the band. He says nothing, though his face scrunches with an unreadable emotion. I don't feel good about lying, but I want to get as far away from here as possible. Well, you should have thought about that when you had a moment. Did you hear me? We can bring back the band, and... He shakes his head wildly. You can't! We won't know until we try. It's over. No. You can't. Band is over. I feel my hopes rise. Does this mean he'll let us leave? I wait for his answer. He continues to stare towards the lake, saying nothing. Suddenly, he utters a strangled choking sound and collapses in on himself. Marching band is over! It's all over! I did what I could to save it, but there was no stopping the school board, and now it's gone, 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 gone! Wait, what? Trembling uncontrollably, he attempts to regain a sitting position and concentrate his unfocused eyes on us. The Blue Mountain School Board met on Thursday night during the first week of band camp and decided to cut the marching band program. Huh? Wh what? It's true. My dream is dead. Everything I worked so hard for, gone in a flash. It was all for nothing. NOTHING! No way! My heart is breaking. I can feel tears coming to my eyes. Come here. Doug takes me in his arms. All of our hard work was for nothing. We've lost all of the time we put into this show. And we've lost even more than that. Football games, pep rallies, parades, competitions. All the fun memories we were going to make alongside our friends will never come to pass. A gaping hole has been torn open inside of me. At least it's not from a bullet wound. Mr. Wiley perks back up with a strange jerk. No! Wait! I've still got a marching band! I've still got a two-man band! We can still compete! This isn't over yet! This isn't over yet! This isn't over yet! He's lost it. And if I stay here any longer, I'm going to lose it too, if I haven't already. <laughs> I need to get out of here. We're gonna go take our break now, Mr. Wiley. We'll be back in five minutes for afternoon practice. Let's go, Doug. Mr. Wiley doesn't acknowledge our departure, but even as we walk away, I can still hear him muttering, this isn't over yet. 
What do you mean before he snaps? The snapping happened days ago. <laughs> uh, at least you're finally making a move. We really need to get out of here before Mr. Wily snaps. He already has snapped. He pointed a gun at your head. And now he confesses that we've lost marching band. Losing you would have been worse. Doug seems surprised by my words. I don't know why. It's the truth. You are much more valuable than marching band, Doug. As upset as I am that the school board canceled the band, escaping with our lives is more important. We could try and swim across the lake. Heading into the wild would be better than staying here. I agree. Do you really think we can swim that distance now as we are? After digging that hole, I don't think I have it in me. But I really want to get out of here. Both of our lives are hanging in the balance. And what about you, Doug? You said deep water scared you. I'll be okay. You're the one I'm worried about. I'm only willing to take the risk of escape if you are. I am too. Then let's get out while we still have the chance. From this distance, I can see the field and the pile of broken pit instruments. There is no one with them. Mr. Wiley has vanished. A chill runs up my spine. He's gone. Let's run for it. It feels like there's a rock sitting in my stomach. I try to keep from glancing over my shoulder as we make our way to the lake as fast as possible. We should check the shack and see if there are any more life jackets left. Good idea, Doug. Because if there aren't, then we might not have a way to get out of here. Oh, yeah. What the? Don't be so sure about that. What? Guys! <laughs> have you been hiding here the entire time? What the heck? Let's go. Pop-Tart! Todd! Close enough. It's so good to see you! But what are you doing here? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? We came back for you. The true hero always appears at the darkest hour to save the day. Wow, you guys are a mess. What happened to you? Doug and I cringe at the memory, not wishing to recount it so soon. That will have to wait. We should get out of here before Mr. Wily catches us. Has he even realized the band is gone? Practice started a while ago. Trust me. We should go. No. Tom and Pop-Tart catch onto the urgency in Doug's tone and spring into action. Follow me to the canoe. Oh, you guys even brought a canoe. Thank goodness. The canoe is parked on shore, hidden from view thanks to the willow tree. Get in. Here, let me help you. Oh, thank you. My legs are still a bit shaky from earlier. Doug easily picks me up and hoists me into the canoe. Pop-Tart grabs a paddle, but Doug takes it from him. I've got you. Thank you. No problem, little buddy. I wouldn't want you spraining one of your little Twizzler arms. <laughs> Poor Pop-Tart. Hmm. Pop-Tart, Tom, you really came through for us. Thank you so much. Doug and Tom push the canoe into the water with a grunt, then hop in to join us. You can thank us when we all get home safely. I wonder what's going to happen to us after this. Therapy. <laughs> yeah. For real, though. Yeah, we can't exactly hold band with a lunatic band director. I catch Doug's eye as the canoe drifts across the lake. He grimaces as if in pain. Then I look from Tom to Pop-Tart. There's something you should know. In fact, the entire band needs to know. Hey! Mr. Wiley! Uh-oh. Mr. Wiley stands on the dock, looking beyond livid. Something black flashes in his hand, catching the light of the sun. Oh god! Where are you going? You can't leave! I won't let you! Everyone, get down! He's got a gun? Everyone throws themselves to the bottom of the canoe. Doug's body presses down on top of mine, shielding me. Pop-Tart is curled into a little ball next to us, shaking furiously, eyes glossed over with pure fear. Oh my god, oh my god! Any moment, I prepare to feel the sting of a bullet. Whoa! 
Oh man, there's a hole in the canoe! It's filling up with water! Of course. <sighs> we have to keep paddling! Doug goes to sit up, but I grab his shirt in my hands. Doug, no! Stay down! We can't just sit here. I think he's reloading. Now would be the time to go. I look deep into Doug's eyes. Despite the situation, he stares back, waiting for my answer. I push aside my fear and take a deep breath. Go. Doug and Tom instantly sit up and begin paddling powerfully away from shore. Water begins to soak through my already damp clothes. My mind clouds with panic. I need to do something. But what? I grab my bag and dig through it, praying that there's something that can help us. My heart sinks. All I have is a couple of snacks, my drum major gloves, and at the very bottom of the bag, a pair of earplugs. What do I do? What was that sound? Um... Uh... Oh, is that the... the... Uh, it's like a trombone or a trumpet sound to indicate that you're close to a bad ending. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> that might have been the the warning set, the warning bell. Hold on. I'm just gonna just gonna put that there. Um. I wish I knew how big the hole is, because I'm like maybe the gloves. To patch the hole? Um, same could go for the earplugs. It's like a bullet-sized hole, right? How big are earplugs? That might be enough. I don't think grabbing... <laughs> grab the Pop-Tart is such a great choice. I don't think grabbing Pop-Tart is the play. It's either the gloves or the earplugs. I... I feel like... Depending on the size, it might be the right size to plug the thing? Either that or she's going to put the earplugs in Pop-Tart's ears, which I don't know if that helps, but... Uh, let's try earplugs. I suppose I can at least try to save my hearing from the gunshots going off around us. As my fist closes around the earplugs, it hits me. I'm like, oh god, please tell me that's not what you're gonna do. Oh my god! Oh, thank you. Thank you for thinking of this. I'm like, uh, okay, did I pick the wrong one then? I take one and jam it into the hole in the canoe. There! The hole is plugged! A perfect fit! Yes! <sighs> We're getting out of here! I, I would so much... I would so much... Ah! No! You can't leave! How can I save the band without you? We leave Mr. Wiley screaming on shore. He doesn't fire off any more shots, and we paddle our way to safety across the lake. Eventually, his shrieking fades, but I can still see a silhouette pacing on shore, watching us get farther and farther away. <sighs> Did that really just happen? This feels more like a movie than real life. Are you okay? Pop-Tart is still curled at the bottom of the canoe, trembling and whimpering. His eyes stare at nothing. I put one hand on his shaking shoulder. He jerks at my touch and he blinks. We're safe now. Just give me a few minutes. It's okay. Take your time. We paddle across the lake in silence for a bit, trying to come to grips with what happened. I try not to think about how close the bullet that pierced the canoe came to hitting one of us. When we reach the others, we need to tell them what Mr. Wiley hid from us. What are you talking about? We'll tell you once everyone's together. Oh, come on! Oh, I hate suspense! Okay, the band is just a bit further down the river. I think I can see them. Yes, there they are! Hey! Woo! Hey, guys! Pop-Tart sits up, deathly pale, but he smiles a little when he sees everyone waiting for us, waving their arms in welcome. The next thing I know, I'm on dry land and everyone is hugging me. I can't even process who I have my arms around because there are so many people pressing in on every side of me. Oh, it's nice to be worried about. <laughs> so, who snitched? Hmm? 
Hmm? Anybody wanna admit to this? <laughs> I sound like Wily. <laughs> so, I know one of you did this! Thank God. You guys made it. Hey. We heard gunshots. Did that come from camp? Mr. Wily is more dangerous than we thought. Uh, are you... Are you okay? We're fine, Susie. <laughs> We're sorry we left you behind. <sighs> Given the incompetence of this band, you can't really be that surprised. Now that I think of it, how did you manage to leave me and dug behind? I'm the damn drum major! <laughs> the section leaders were in charge of making sure their entire section was here. Okay, so I have no section, but what about Doug? Aaron is usually so meticulous. Aaron points to Drum and Drummer. I don't like idiots. Those two idiots were making trouble, so I couldn't take full account of the drum line. I should have known Doug would be the one not to show up. Makes sense. Actually, hell no that doesn't make sense. Like I said, I'm the damn drum major and Doug is the biggest bass drum. Literally, you can't overlook us. At least we're all together now. But will someone please explain what's going on? What happened? And what do we do now? Everyone looks to me. Our happy reunion is over. It's time to tell them the truth. I steady my breathing, bracing myself for what's to come. Before we tackle any of that, there's something you all need to know. What? Yo. We can't hear you from back here! There's a large rock at the base of an oak tree nearby, jutting out of the ground. I clamber up onto it and gaze over the faces of my friends. All eyes are on me. Here I go! You all need to know, marching band is no more. Duh! Obviously! Not band camp. Marching band itself. The school board cut it from our school's music program during the first week of band camp. A hush falls over the band. For a long moment, no one says anything. Then they burst into chatter all at once. Excuse me? Impossible! <sighs> but, but we worked so hard! <clears throat> What the hell was Wily getting at, keeping us all trapped here? Was he trying to make marching band last forever? Ridiculous. He's lost his mind. And he wasted everyone's time, too. Maybe that's why he wanted to make the show really good. For the school board. As soon as Doug says it, I feel as though I've been struck by lightning. I have an idea. Everyone! Listen to me! It's too loud. Everyone is talking at once, and I can no longer make my voice heard. Not fair. Why do they have to cancel marching band as soon as I'm old enough to be in it? Well, this sucks. Why didn't any of us hear that this was on the table? Why the school board let us start the season last May if they were just going to break it off in August? Listen! I have an idea! Ugh! Because the school board members are just a bunch of arrogant asses who don't care about the welfare of the students. Oh, it can't be true. It just can't be. Then a voice drowns out all others. Oh, hello, you. I thought Doug was going to be the one to yell. Everyone, shut up! Our drum major is speaking! They all fall silent at once. I blink back my surprise and manage a grateful nod towards Susie. I... I had an idea. It doesn't have to end like this. Maybe we can still save the band. How? Oh. We need to put up a fight. We need to convince the school board that marching band is worth keeping. Let's do this. That's a great idea. If they want to say no more marching band, then they'll have to say it to our faces. Exactly. If we go together, maybe marching band still has a chance. We can perform the show for them, make them see how hard we worked for this, so that none of what we did was in vain. I raised my voice triumphantly, empowered by the thought. The band, dead-eyed with shock moments ago, begins to return to life. Hope fills their expressions as I finish my speech. We can do this! We won't give up marching band without a fight! Oh yeah! Get pumped, everyone! Too bad we don't have any pit instruments. I flinch. 
But of course, the pit will still be there to support everyone. You can count on us. So are we just gonna stand around talking about it all day, or are we gonna go home already? I'm glad somebody's got priorities, correct? I grin. We're going home! Everyone cheers and sets off down the river. I step down from my perch upon the giant rock. We may be miles from civilization, but with everyone by my side, I know we can do this. We're going home, and we're going to save the band. Cadence! Wait! Susie! Susie throws herself at me and grips me in a bone-crushing hug. Our feud feels like it was a long time ago now. I hug her back, relieved. Yeah? Yeah, I knew- But- So did your guilty conscience bother you and you're like, you gotta send somebody back to go get them? <laughs> Susie. Uh, this is a worse betrayal than Clark. Oh, man. It... It was me. Huh? I'm the one who told on you. I saw you in the woods with Doug when he brought you the wind chime. I went straight to Mr. Wiley about it. Oh. So that's how he knew. What happened? Those gunshots. And you're all covered in mud. What did he do? I can't tell her. She would just blame herself, and she already seems upset enough about it. I don't know, I feel like you should tell her so that she knows that her actions have consequences, and holding on to petty fights is dumb! Ugh, but maybe you're not right now. Maybe do it later. <laughs> uh, anyway. It's not important. What is important is that no one got hurt. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll never forgive myself for stabbing you in the back like that. Well, you'd better, because I forgive you. Thanks, Cadence. <clears throat> as soon as I get phone service, I'm calling the police on that psycho kidnapper, Wiley. He's not going to get away with this. I sure hope not. Speaking of the pit instruments, there's someone I need to talk to. Finally, two weeks later. Should I tell Marion the truth? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> I don't even care if this is a bad ending. Tell her the freaking truth. It's overdue. While well, confessions are happening, just get it out of the way. I hurry to the head of the pack where I find Marion and pull her aside. Hey, can I talk to you, Marion? We're in the middle of escaping. I promise it'll be quick. Okay. What is it? We step aside, letting our bandmates continue on without us. Here goes nothing. I should have told you this a long time ago. It's my fault the pit instruments went missing. <sighs> I bow my head, guilt washing over me. It's impossible to meet her eyes. Doug and I were fooling around. We wound up breaking them beyond repair, so we hid them in the lake. It was stupid. I know. I'm really sorry, I- You lied to me. Mm-hmm. You looked me in the face and pretended not to know where the pit instruments were, even while I was crying my eyes out in front of you. I'm not proud of myself. Ugh! All of the suffering I had to endure this week is your fault! Well, not entirely. I'd say Mr. Wiley had something to do with it, but I'm not going to say that. Marion, listen, I am so incredibly sorry, and if there's ever a chance to make it up to you, I promise I will- Are you kidding me? Whatever. I can't even look at you right now. She leaves. There goes our friendship. Looks like I can't handle having more than one good friend at a time. I get Susie back, and now I've lost Marion. One good friend at a time? Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> Am I being as petty as Susie was? Maybe. <laughs> but I feel like, proportionately speaking, what she did to Cadence was worse than what Cadence did to Susie. Uh, anyway. Let's just get out of here. I just want to- I want these kids out of here. <laughs> I feel sick to my stomach, but at least I told the truth. That was the right thing to do. Right? Hey! And then Marion pulled out a gun and shot everybody. <laughs> and we would deserve it. 
Cadence! Doug comes jogging to my side, flanked by two of his section mates, Tanner and Sophie. By the expressions on their faces, I can tell they don't come bearing good news. Now what? What's wrong? Aaron is missing. What the? Can't... The circus, man. What? And it's their fault. Man! Oh, cool it. It was just a harmless prank. We decided to give him a taste of his own medicine. What did you do? They both snicker. That's enough. Hey! Drum and drummer flinch. <clears throat> We're not on some field trip taking a fun hike through the woods. This is serious. Tell us what happened. Oh my. Seeing Doug get assertive gives me butterflies. Be <laughs> still my heart. <laughs> it's a good look on him. Fine. We ran off into the woods and he followed us to try and make us come back. But then we ditched him and circled back around. You idiot! We're in the middle of nowhere. He could get lost. It was just a harmless prank. The prankster got pranked! Cadence, let's go. You're right. Which way did he go? I don't know. That way-ish. He points into the woods. We'll find him. Tell everyone to wait for us. We'll be right back. It's never easy, is it? Don't worry. I have a feeling we're past the worst of it. I hope so. Bear? What was that? Me and my big fat mouth. We run ahead. Aaron! <laughs> oh no, Aaron. <sighs> Help! Aaron is at least 15 feet up a tree, clinging to a branch. At the bottom of the tree is... <sighs> what the... What... What is going... Why... Sheesh. Alright, now we got a bear. Think fast! What do we do? Feed? Don't feed the bear! And you can't run, because then you leave Aaron in the lur- Oh, gosh. The only thing we can do is try to scare it off. This is- Doug, make yourself really big. <laughs> try to scare it away. Uh... It's definitely not this one. It's one of these two. I, I'm I vote for scare the bear. Doug, we need to make ourselves as big as possible and try to scare the bear off. Make all sorts of noise. You can count on me. Got it. Without warning, Doug picks me up and puts me on his shoulders. Excellent plan. I wave my arms wildly, screaming louder than I ever have before. Get out of here, bear! Move it or lose it! <laughs> Leave Aaron alone! The bear, which had been, pre been preparing to climb the tree, pauses with its claws dug into the bark. Despite my fear, I urge Doug to move closer and we loom over the bear. Fight me! We're not afraid of you! Uh, now who? Cadence! Doug! What's going on? Suddenly, the entire band comes running. I feel a mixture of relief and fear. I don't want anyone getting hurt. Everyone, let's band together and scare this bear off. Make yourselves as big as possible. Do it. All at once, over 50 kids are screaming their heads off at this bear, jumping around like they've lost their minds. I see Peter hoisting Felicity onto his shoulders. Nice. Some kids even pick up rocks and start hurling them at the bear. Suck on this, bear. Aaron! This is for you, Aaron. Please don't hurt us. Some have strong vocal cords, their voices sailing above the rest. Yeah, come on! Eat me less, you stupid bear! Yeah! Meanwhile, others are... recording the ordeal with their phones? What? This is so going to go viral. Tom! In the end, we're too much for the terrified bear. It backs away with wide eyes and takes off running into the woods. Everyone cheers! <laughs> I'd say that was a pretty effective band bonding experience. <laughs> Talk about strength in numbers. Are you okay? Aaron slowly, shakily, climbs down from the tree. As his feet touch the ground, he grins, relieved. Yeah? I'm fine, thanks to all of you. 
Perfect. Then let's get the hell out of here. <laughs>